Yo, hi everyone and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to talk about ASUS, how it works inside of After Effects and how to transfer your EXR files from Cinema 4D rendered with Redshift and how to convert and transform everything from ASUS to sRGB without diving deep inside of technical aspects of this color profile. If you guys ready, let's start with setting up uh, Redshift and uh, Cinema 4D for ASUS profile because it's important when you're gonna deal with After Effects to match these settings. If you guys ready, let's jump inside of Cinema 4D and let's get started. All right, let's start with ASUS. I am in Cinema 4D and let's break down some settings that are really important to set up before we go to After Effects. So first of all, we need to set up everything inside of Project Settings and to do that, we are going to Edit project settings. Then in the project tab, we need to find uh, color management. Let's expand this panel here and we have some settings. Currently I'm using open color IO, which means I'm going to use ASUS. But if you want to render everything out with the um, sRGB without any hassle in the future, uh, switch back to basic. So if you enable basic, you can skip the whole video, just render with basic and everything gonna look fine. But we are going to use ASUS, uh, which means I'm switching to open color IO and in preset I use ASUS. Then uh, we are going to render space. Make sure that it's set to ASUS CG, it's really important. Uh, and if you want to change to something different, probably you know what are you doing, but in our case, we are going to use ASUS CG, then display space sRGB, which means we're going to render everything out um, by using ASUS, but we'll preview everything inside of sRGB and everything going to live by default. Then let's switch to render settings inside of um, Cinema 4D. So first of all, make sure you are in Redshift. Then we are going to save. For the regular image, I use uh, PNG, which means it's gonna be my reference image. I use it in case something goes wrong with uh, AUVs and my main passes. But yeah, this one is just as a reference, as I said, and depth 8-bit, alpha and everything like this. Then multipass, I use OpenEXR 16-bit, but the quality is really depends on the project. If it's daily, 16 is fine. If it's some commercial and I need to have a lot of um, flexibility and it's really important for me, I use 32. But usually I stick with 16. I think it's fine. Then we are going to Redshift and I'm going to give you a quick tip how to set up uh, your scene in Redshift. So basically uh, switch to Basic tab, uh, to Basic mode. And from here you can select one of the presets. For example, you can go and start with medium, then we are switched to advanced and here uh, we can uh, control threshold which means quality and render time. So basically the lower value here the better quality you get but you will have the longer time to render everything out. But usually it's always depends on the project how complex it is, how many glasses and textures you have but usually I'm trying to have some something like 0 0.2, maybe 0 0.3 or even 5. Depends um, how complex this thing is and if I have a lot of glasses, obviously it's going to be higher. So then everything is fine. We are going to globals and we have color management. So basically in new version, uh, all color management we have done inside of uh, project panel. If you use older version uh, of Redshift, make sure you have uh, similar settings to this one. But right now is everything is so handy. So basically you can set up everything inside of this project panel and this will automatically apply on Redshift. Few more things, AOVs, show AOV manager. And this is what I usually use for AOV. So it's always shadows. Ref refractions if I have glasses, reflection and specular lighting. So these are my the most used um, AUVs. Sometimes I add 
for example, uh, global illumination or some object IDs. Yeah, it, it always depends on the scene. My final render always have uh, RGBA uh, pass, which means, which stands for like beauty is pretty much the same. But if you want, if you have some really uh, important project um, and you don't have time to render it, uh, you can use beauty. At beauty is gonna be like your final um, look that you see in Redshift render view. As you can see, we've done pretty basic setup of ASUS inside of Cinema 4D and Redshift. And now we are ready to import our rendered file from Redshift and Cinema 4D straight to After Effects. Let's jump inside of After Effects and let's continue. All right, I am in After Effects and let's import some of my renders here. Uh, as you can see, I have uh, my PNG as a reference image that I have here. And also I have uh, multipass uh, EXR files. Just select this EXR, the first one, in the settings, great composition and open EXR sequence. Hit import. And now we have a question for us. So how we want to import uh, this EXR as composition or footage. Usually I go with composition and I don't need uh, this contact sheet. I don't need pre-compose layers. I'm gonna stick with composition and hit OK. All right, we import everything inside of uh, After Effects. Let's take a look. And everything looks really bad. Everything is washed out. All colors are wrong and we need to fix it. So basically, right now, After Effects does know that it's um, ASUS or it's uh, sRGB. We need to set it up. And to do that, we are going to File, project settings and in color tab we need to change color engine from adobe color manage to oco color manage hit ok then oco configuration leave it as it is and um, bit depth so even if you use if you render in 16 bit uh, exr always make sure that you are using 32 bits i don't know why but after effects feel doesn't work well in 16-bit so it's usually better to stick with 32 and then work in space so here we need to set up um, compositing linear aces aces cg make sure it's cg not uh, cc or anything else and display color so basically we will convert asus to srgb and hit ok and everything looks much better but these colors are not the same as I remember I saw in Redshift and I know the reason why. And to fix this, we are going to uh, EXR, make a right click here, interpret footage, main. Let's go to color. And here, override media color space, uh, we have ACES and it's run ASUS. If you guys know how to uh, change this uh, override media color space to ASUS CG, like by default, let me know, but all the time I need to change it manually. So basically let's open it up and we need to change this default to composite in linear ASUS ASUS CG. There is also scene linear ASUS ASUS CG, which is pretty much the same. I didn't find any difference here. So as you can see, there is no difference and hit OK. And after we've done this, uh, everything looks exactly the same as uh, I saw in my render view. And this is exactly what I want to have. So right now I can create new adjustment layer and add some levels. And I want to add some contrast here to make it more saturated, more colorful, bright like this. And this is exactly what I want to have in my final render. And after this, we can do some compositing. As you can see, I have this uh, RGBA, which stands for this main pass that we see here. So we need to put it down below and let's turn off all other layers. And let's start by adding some uh, AVs. So I have global illumination and let's change type to, for example, screen. Then I have object buffer, I don't need it for now. Then I have reflections, so let's change type to add. Uh, refractions, do the same, add. 
and also you can control the amount of this uh, pass the next thing is uh, shadows it's a bit confusing for me but shadows are inverted there are a few ways how we can use shadows so first of all we can invert let's make invert and change type to multiply and now we have our shadows we can uh, of course reduce the amount of these shadows there is another way so let's go back to normal let's uh, delete this invert map and we can create new adjustment layer let's place it below our shadows and let's add levels and let's make everything darker for example like this i just reducing the whites and the next thing i need to use these shadows as a luma mate if I on and off, we can control our shadows. I think it's the right way to use shadows because you have more soft influence on your image and it looks much better. But the only problem here, if I want to render everything out from After Effects right now, it's gonna look like this. And the reason because uh, this uh, menu here, these uh, settings, these are just uh, like a guides that help you to understand what's going on in your scene. And we need to transform all of this information, all of these ASUS files in uh, sRGB. And to do that, we need to create new adjustment layer. And for this adjustment layer, we need to add effect OCO, color space transform or display transform. These are pretty much the same. Let's start with this one. Let's apply this effect and we have input and output. For input, everything looks fine have SSCG and for output we need to set up sRGB okay everything looks terrible now and the reason of this is because we have to interpret of this uh, image so first is done by this OCO color transform and the second by this uh, guide layer uh, we need to set this um, ASUS sRGB to none and now if we make render everything gonna look exactly the same as we see here so basically this is the main idea how to use ASUS inside of After Effects. Alright, I hope you find this video useful and now you know how to use ASUS inside of After Effects. And uh, if you find this video useful, let me know in the comments and also you can hit the like button to appreciate this video. I will appreciate your appreciation. And thank you guys for watching one more time and see you next time. Peace.